Hi everyone, I'm Vincent from Card Hour and this is the Select Few Podcast number three. Hey guys, Troy and Card Hour here, back with the third episode of our Select Few Podcast. Really happy. Uh, thank you guys so much for the questions and the response. We're really glad you're enjoying it. Um, and we're just going to keep the videos coming. I think I'm enjoying doing this with you, just talking about soccer, talking about soccer cards. And there's some cool stuff going on. Uh, we have some big sure. Tops Now cards that came out, some direct autos. Uh, we have some really good Q&A questions talking about PSA versus BGS. And also uh, some Mbappe true rookies. Is it time to buy? But before that, we have some, you know, a lot of good news. Uh, big Champions League news. We have the draw results, the final 16. So... Uh, let's just get right into it with uh, Munch and Gladbach versus Man City. Yeah, I think a lot of people will look at this fixture and think that it's going to be an easy one for Man City. I mean, Munch and Gladbach had a, had a pretty good games. They're in a pretty good form. So you never know with these Germans. You know, they're saying like a game lasts 90 minutes and at the end of the game, Germans win. It's like you never, you're never done with them. And especially over two games... That should play in the favor of Man City. But I, at this point, I feel like the entire draw, maybe, there's going to there's gonna be some upsets. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, to be honest, when I looked at this one, my first thought was upset. Like, Man City, I just feel like they have a lot of talent, and especially in the squad. Like, the bench and stuff is pretty crazy at this point. But I just saw that. Mucci and Godblock, they're just a team that strikes me, like you said, the Germans. I feel like they can find a way. I mean, it's two legs, so, you know, if they get them in one leg, it, it, things can change. But I would be pretty worried if I was Pep in Man City with this with this draw. Well, I mean, a lot of people are questioning if man, what's wrong with Man City. Like, what, what's happening? Why, why are they, like, blowing teams out? Like, they just drew 1-1 to West Brom and stuff like that. I, I think Guardiola is transitioning to a competitive team, like a competition team, to a more Champions League team. I think he he's won the champ, he's won the league, like with City. He's won the league with uh, Barcelona, um, but he has. It's the last time since he won the Champions League was actually I think it was back in 2010, so that's 10 years ago. Now. When he's at when he joined City in 2016, he already spent more than 500 million on defenders, and he has nothing to show for. He keeps winning these EFL Cups, these Community Shields, but he has he hasn't won the Champions League going back to 2010. So I think he's he's playing more with the two central defensive midfielders right now, and Aguero being out, he only has Jesus, who is not really that top of top striker. So I think he's playing a more defensive um, formation right now to be able to um, keep things shut. And with the Brannan and sometimes with Mares, all he takes is one good ball. And if you can keep the defense close, then I think he just wants to try and then grind these games. That's what I. Well, that's what I think. So yeah, because yeah, it's, it's going to be it, interesting. It's a. It's different. It's a whole different ball game. You know what I mean? And I was going to say that's a soccer thing, but it's really. I mean, it is in a sense, but it's also kind of not. There's any sport, football, basketball, even baseball. Things are different. Things are tighter. Um, yeah. I feel like in maybe in the league, especially against some of these lower sides, they can kind of just dominate possession and, and do these kind of things. But like you said, in their case, it only takes one, you know, one good ball, but also for the other team. You know what I mean? They break through and that's it. That could be curtains on your Champions League, uh, you know, season. So. We'll see. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. Um, hopefully Pep can get one because very talented manager. But okay, yeah, we'll we'll move on. Uh, Bayern versus yep. Lazio. This, I think, this should always be for Bayern. Lazio is super inconsistent, especially away from home, and I think Bayern is just way too much for anyone to. I can see them winning the whole thing again. So I, w for me, it's an easy one. It's gonna be Bayern. Yeah, they're the they're the favorites, so I think it would be pretty shocking. You know, I don't. It's far from a, a sure thing that they'll win the entire thing, even though they are the favorites. But to see them 
go out here in the in the first knockout round, I think would be pretty surprising, especially to Lazio. Uh, yeah, that's what, especially against Lazio. So I think this this should be an easy one for uh, Bayern. Okay, enough said about that one. Uh, Atletico, Chelsea. I think Chelsea are actually the favorites, aren't they? Um, yeah. I think I I I I don't see it for Chelsea. I think I would say it's more like a 55-45, 60-40 for Atletico. I mean, Joao Felix is improving, and they still have someone like Suarez who has that experience. Now Chelsea is still trying to figure out like everything and anything. Like they have they have bought different types of players, like a bunch of players, and they're trying to fit them all together. I I think Atletico could edge this. Yeah, this this is this may be kind of like lazy analysis, but I swear with these English teams, I just don't know what I'm gonna get. You know what I mean? Like I, I could see yeah. them just I could see Chelsea going out there and you know killing it and in winning three nil or something, but I could also see them just not doing well at all. So they have a lot of talent, like you mentioned. They're probably the favorites, but as we talked about last episode. Atletico, like they'll, they, they, I know what I'm getting from them. They can, they'll, <laughs> yeah. they're gonna play hard, play some good defense, and find a way to maybe get a goal. And especially if they get the early one, I mean, this is dangerous. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say Atletico is a favorite in this one, not, not Chelsea. Yeah, I guess that. Yeah, you're true. That is true. Okay, moving on. Liverpool, Leipzig. Well, it's the games are being played in February next year, so mm. we we have no idea what what players Liverpool will have to their disposal. Um, it was funny because everyone, <coughs> sorry, Klopp always keeps talking about he's missing players and the schedule is too busy. Not sure if you've seen the video from uh, Mourinho. Yeah, that was so. He's <laughs> so funny. He's not even trying to be funny. Fabinho yeah. is not hurt. <laughs> Andrew <laughs> Robertson is not hurt. <laughs> yeah. Mane, not injured. Salah, not injured. So, I mean, he had a point, though. Everyone, everyone, like, basically, there's only one or two first-team players missing. So, now, Jota is out for six to eight weeks, so I'm not sure how, how, how he comes back. But, I mean... Liverpool basically has their full team besides Van Dijk. So I I would I would say it depends on who Liverpool has. I don't see Leipzig really having a chance to be honest. Yeah, I'm, but I'm over not too, two I'm games, not, I think this is a Liverpool game. Yeah, I'm not too scared of Leipzig for some reason. Like especially against Liverpool, I feel like people are underrating them to an extent like you said. I mean, it's really going to be Van Dijk yeah. out. Leipzig is a good squad. Let's not get it twisted, but um, I feel yeah. like Liverpool, it's got to be them moving forward. Um, okay, Juventus, yeah. Juventus Porto. I, I feel like this is the only one that isn't an, or couldn't be an upset. And that's, mm-hmm. I mean, Por, Porto is Porto. It's, no, nah, I, I don't see it. This should always be Juventus, especially yeah. over two games. I, I, I don't see a scenario where Porto takes this one. I, yeah. I, I can't. I'll, I'll admit my ignorance here a little bit. Uh, believe it or not, I've been not watching many Portuguese league games this year. So how, how good is Porto this year? Because some, si- some years, even though they're not you know, a, a top five league, they're really, really strong. But my impression was that they're not the same this year. I mean, they still have players like Pepe and stuff. I mean, yeah. they're... They are just, I mean, it's hard to compare them to other leagues because, as you said, it's a Portuguese league and all that stuff. They're still in the Champions League and they made it to the knockout stages, which yeah. says something. But I I can't see it. I think they just have a bad draw <laughs> against Juventus. So, yeah, that's, I, that's... I, I, can, I can see this be like a 0-2 Juventus away and a 0-2 a Juventus at home or something like that. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. Um, the next game is uh, going to be a little bit more tightly contested, <laughs> if you ask my opinion. We have Barcelona versus PSG. 
I'm gonna ask you who what, what do you think? Let's start off with you because you're wearing the nice Barcelona shirt. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> uh, shout out Kid Gallery PH. Um, <laughs> what do I think? I have no faith in Barcelona. I'm just kind of, but also, I will <laughs> say I would rather have them playing PSG. I mean, obviously, versus like a Bayern or something. And excuse me if I get the seeds wrong here, but even. Real Madrid or Juventus like I don't know I, I don't th think this is a terrible draw for them in my opinion just because I also don't exactly know what I'm getting from PSG like Barcelona could go through here I mean I'm if PSG is definitely who I'm picking and I think most people would probably pick them but yeah I think just it could go it could go either way you never like both teams could kind of not show up in a game and that can swing the whole thing yeah, I mean, I, I I have to agree. Even though PSG tends to choke in these round of sixteen and, and quarterfinals, I mean, we don't even know if Messi will still be at Barcelona by then. Oh, don't we say don't that! Don't say that. <laughs> we, we, we yeah, we people have to remember that the January transfer window is is in between. Um, so. I've been seeing a lot of reports and people talking about actually Messi going to PSG. Um, so let's say for the sake of this video that he stays at, at Barcelona, I, I still think PSG has the upper hand. I mean, they're still without Fati. You have Griezmann and Dombele who are very hot or cold. So one game they can turn up, the next game we don't, they disappear. So I, I, I think I have to give it to PSG here as well. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you, you got Neymar and Mbappe, and it's a, soccer is a lot more than that. But I think I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna go with <laughs> with that squad. But you want to hear my sneaky prediction? We had Sergi Roberto miracle goal to get Barcelona past PSG last time. Ricky Puig miracle goal. Barcelona moves on. That's a million to one really? odds. But if I hit, well, uh, which. If, if he's not even play, he's not well, even. Well, that's that's why it's a mirror. That's why it's million to one odds. So <laughs> you got to send me one of your Mbappe PSA tens if that one actually comes through. Uh, but okay, we'll move on. Sevilla versus Dortmund. I. It all. It, I think it depends on the next coach of Dortmund. He, they 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 uh, sacked uh, Favre. So they're not been playing very well. Every time I look at the uh, the score sheet, they're nil one nil behind. Um, so I I don't know to be honest. Sevilla is a real. They 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 win they win cups. I mean, look how how good they've been playing in the Europa League. Obviously, Champions League is something better. But again, Dortmund is one of these teams that chokes in in these round of sixteens and quarterfinals. So. If they got Holland back, I, I guess I have to give it to Dortmund because Holland Holland is just Holland. Um, but I I can see them I can see them being knocked out here. Yeah, I mean Sevilla's Sevilla is just one of those like it's always a strong side. I mean we talked about their yeah. Europa League success. They know how to win in these type of tournaments. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, I mean I was just talking to Holland, comparing our times in Qatar. You know he's he's rehabbing over there right now. Um, yeah. But he'll he'll be yeah he'll be back by by then obviously because yeah. it's far. Um, yeah, yeah. Kind of a random side note, but did you see Giovanni Reina's quotes that he put out or someone put out? No, I haven't. He he he. There were some quotes he was quoted recently saying, um, "I I'm I'm gonna be one of the top ten players in the world uh, at New York City FC when things were going wrong. They look to me." And I made things happen and I'm ready to do that at Dortmund and like a bunch yeah. of really confident stuff. And it was interesting too, because I feel like in general, Europeans are more like matter of fact, like in the sense of like, what I'm the best. So I'm going to say I'm the best, like, like Zlatan a little bit, like maybe not that <laughs> far, but like Americans, sometimes it's like, Oh, what are people going to feel if I say that? So for him to say that was really was really surprising to me. I'm not saying I disagree with it, but it's interesting for him to say say that right now. So it'll be interesting to see what what role he takes going forward. Yeah, I mean, it's good for these guys to have some kind of confidence. Like, look look at um, Conor McGregor. 
at the end of the sometimes this becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy um like if you say it if you keep repeating it and, and you keep performing because i mean the goal he, he scored was was a pretty nice goal even though they lost like one four to i can't remember who it was against um no I'm not sure in the bundesliga they, they lost one i think it was frankfurt uh, but the goal was nice and i have and as you said i have i have heard him say stuff like that in the past like I'm, i want to be a top 10 guy i want to be the forefront guy of Dortmund I want to be whatever um it's still a long way to go but I mean the kid has confidence and that's that's good yeah definitely it's good it's good to see him having confidence uh you mentioned yeah. Conor McGregor's confidence it is such a shame he's going to get beat up by Jake Paul you know you hate you hate to see his career go down that path uh <laughs> before anyone roasts me let's move on Atalanta versus Real Madrid Oh, I think this is a hard one. Atalanta, I don't know. I think it depends again. Is Hazard going to be playing? I don't know for Real Madrid. And Atalanta, has, I've seen some reports that some players want to leave, that there is like internal struggles and internal fights. And are we still underrating Atalanta? No. <sighs> I think I think Real Madrid has the experience on their side with players like Benzema and Ramos, obviously. So I I, I think this could go either way, but I have to give it to Real. Yeah, I can't I can't really get a read on Real this year. You know, they have really no. solid players, like you mentioned, Benzema, Ramos, even like random guys like Valverde is just like always seems yeah. to do a pretty good job out there. But yeah, also at the same time. Uh, Vinicius, like I mentioned, I mean, not that he's even much of a factor at this point, but Hazard, yeah. do I even want him out there at this point? Like, sorry, that's your guy. That's your countryman, but I don't know what I'm I mean, getting from him. I would say the exact same. I, I don't, even if he plays, what, 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 I mean, he scored one goal in like 300 minutes or something. Exactly. What was it? 300 days it was. Like, it, can you even put him in the, as as you said is he even a factor if he plays or what, what value do you give someone like that so yeah, i would that's... say real madrid just because of the name <laughs> yeah it's it's interesting too like i feel like i'm i'm trying i'm getting my sol- soccer knowledge more and more like hopefully on kind of a higher level a lot of times when you have these aging stars like i'll watch yeah. a good video on rooney and kind of what it was like his career trajectory and kind of the end of his Manchester United, you have to do a lot to kind of like the other players have to compensate so much for them. Like, it's almost like the whole team's focus is on like, all right, how do we get hazard to be able to do what he does here? And in a champions league match, like you don't really want that. No, you actually want the opposite. Like, how can we, how can we make sure they can do whatever they want? I mean, Especially with Hazard, he's more he's more a burden than than he that's, is. That's that's exactly what I'm saying. Player. Like these older yeah, stars become a burden when they're on the field. Yeah, and then you have someone like Benzema who is the complete opposite. I mean, he he still plays um easily a match, and he's never like never injured. I mean, he he he's he's what you want to see from an Hazard, and that's that's not happening. So. Uh, I mean, they have like Isco and Asensio. I mean, pff, yeah, I guess. Um, but yeah, I just have to give it to Real here. Definitely. Well, that's it for the Champions League. Uh, we talked about Hazard. Speaking of things that I think are overpriced, uh, tops now, <laughs> Weston McKinney, direct autos. Yeah, it was interesting to see. I mean, first first I was like, is this another <laughs> lost rookie? But then it was it wasn't. Yeah, it was um, after his amazing goal, I have to say, against Barcelona in the Champions League. Um, it was a nice goal. So it was kind of obvious that there was something coming from Tops' side. <laughs> uh, they didn't put an RC logo on this time, which is which is already a step forward. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the prices, I, I, I don't know. How, how do you feel about this? Um, well... I'm gonna go on a tangent, so enjoy. But let's go. I'm I'm an American capitalist, but I see things like this, and it kind of makes me hate capitalism. Like, 
is this is kind of getting fake deep right now, but it's like I think top sees the prices people are paying on eBay for, you know, like these certain cards and just how much, basically how much money there is flowing in the soccer card and just the card market in general. And I think this is just the beginning of like, how can we easily and efficiently grab a piece of it? You know what I mean? Because Weston McKinney is not even like, to be honest, like a huge draw, like he's American, but if it wasn't for that, it'd be almost nothing. So I mean, the the on card one of one auto sold for 800 bucks. Like the the idea that they could just churn those out is a great business decision. But I'm just I don't know, for some reason, this just once again, this just rubs me the wrong way. I'm not I'm not really a big fan of it. Because what is what is a one of one if you just buy it? Like if you just buy it direct from tops, what's even the point of that? Yeah. I I mean you can disagree. I want to yell. It's what's your opinion? I, I'm I'm not sure. I mean I, I kinda like Weston McKinney. I, I watched the uh three international friendlies of America of the USA <laughs> men's national team. Um and I, I he was by far the most consistent one out there. So I, I, I kinda like Weston McKinney, even now he's playing for Juventus and all that stuff. But I I'm just not sure, like, uh, are we going to see after every goal, after every whatever happens, like a great goal on Hattrick, are we going to see like these top snow cards with these? Because this is the first time they do this on card autograph, right? For just yes. a random event. Yep. So next time, if it's another young player, they can just do it over and over and over and over again so well, yeah i mean i guess that's my point on mckinney though i mean obviously he's a good player he plays for the yeah. u.s national team obviously i'm a fan of him but i'm saying how many players could you name that people would rather have than mckinney that's yeah, my point I'm, i think we could sit here and maybe even get to a hundred so tops from a pure supply and demand uh aspect if they put out, they could put out a hundred more of these guys. It's just going to be every day, you know, it's going to be uh, Foden and then even, you know, like Vinicius and then some real heavy hitters. Oh my God, Jude Bellingham for $5,000. Like, I really think I could see someone paying that, which is insane. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and now that I think of it, like with the Mokoku, he, he hasn't even scored. He was just like debut. That was it. Yeah. That, that that's all that's all that's all it takes nowadays to get an, a card from tops is just running on the pitch not doing anything um so yeah i mean it's great for people that actually like mckinney and collect them I, I it's the same with all these lost rookies as well uh it's it's some i feel like it's kind of a money grab but people are willing to pay for it so does that mean the, the soccer card market is still very active I guess, unless it's just guys knowing people are willing to pay anything, just trying to get one and just instantly putting on eBay for more could also be the case. Um, but I mean, the money stays in the soccer card market, right? Even though I, I kind of have to agree with you that I don't agree <laughs> with the whole top snow thing. The money stays in the soccer market. So I don't know. Yeah, the only thing that scares me is like I'm going full card old timer right here, but this is like junk wax esque to me. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like I said, you mentioned Makoko, that's easy to like four grand. I really think four grand someone would have paid that for a one of one first auto. So if someone will pay that, why would tops just not keep doing it? But yeah, exactly. And I can't say for sure, like you said, it stays in the soccer card market. But if these just come out like every every week or something, I just feel like yeah. that's not good for the market. I don't know really how to explain it. And maybe that's just my personal feeling, but I just don't think it's a good thing. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I I I've wondered that from like from the beginning. Like, are they really gonna print every single time that something happens? And up until this point, it's actually the case. Like stepping on the field because you're young. Yep, you get a card like scoring a crazy goal you get a card uh i mean 
I think these should be more more rare for for anything. Like, what's what's the what's the value going to be like in five years time? I don't know. But oh, I just I just had a really good thought, and yeah. this is this is kind of a deep cut. But this this is kind of reminding me of how FIFA is changing, because it let's let's draw the parallel. Yeah. Before it was just in FIFA, it's like you the the players are released and that's it. So it's yeah. like at the beginning of the game, it's Ronaldo, Messi, whoever, and then you chase them. That'd be kind of like if it's just Topps Chrome, and that's when you get Makoko, that's where you get Bellingham, that's where you get Pedri, and like that was fun. It was cool. You chase them, you know what you're getting. But then with FIFA, it started with here's mustache Messi and here's game breaker Messi and here's one of one super refractor Messi and then here's purple stars, rookies of the lost age Messi. And it just like they keep pumping it out because they know people will buy it. And it just makes you like, I don't want any of this. Like I really like it. And it, it's, it's, it's different. I understand, but. I would rather it just be you have a, a couple sets and it's like, okay, when Topps Chrome comes out or in an optic or whatever the different sets are, you chase the rookies and those are the rookies that are there. But yeah. with all, when you're just like, it, it's just when you get into money grab mode, I think it, it devalues the things you're chasing. I think it makes sense too. Especially if you explained in FIFA terms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, that was kind of a, a deep cut, but I think the parallel yeah, is there. A good, it was a good one. Yeah, it was a good one. Yeah, I, I'm. I just wonder where it's gonna end with tops now. Like when, when, when is it enough? Enough? Like, yeah, yeah. We, and, we'll and have to see. We'll see. And 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 also, I want to be careful not to be too much of an old timer here because I bet you when the first parallels came out. People were like, oh my God, what is this nonsense? There's one rookie and yeah. one rookie only, and the market can never yeah. handle more than one. So who knows? Maybe this is actually a good thing. That's just how I feel about it. Um, Last fun fact yep. that, that's what I saw in like little small letters is like uh, the website says ships in 16 to 20 weeks after the count time timer ends. So that's in four to five months from now that you get your on auto cards. Wow, that's a super tops is taking your money, putting it in a high interest <laughs> account, and they're getting the little extra profits they can before they even pay to make these. So yeah, I find it interesting. It was like in the small, small letters, like yeah. under it was like, what? That's a that's yeah. a good find. Let's just sneak this in that you're not gonna get this card for half a year. So that makes my faith in them even less. Um, but okay, <laughs> that's it for hobby news this week. Maybe a little shorter, but we're gonna move into QA. We got some really good questions. Um, if you guys want to ask questions, please, we'd really appreciate it. Leave them down below. Really enjoying these. Uh, we'll start off with Astro Boy. Uh, he said, good stuff, mate. One question for grading PSA versus BGS. Which one do you think is better? I think it depends on what you're grading. Um, and especially like with the news of these fake slabs, I, I don't know. There has been a lot going on with BGS too, like fake slabs and cards and, and backlogs. Everyone has backlogs, but if you put them all together, like and you have a backlog and you have fake slabs all over the place. And I, I don't know. I, I, I also, it, I think it depends on what you grade. Because these sticker slabs are horrible for P PSA. But um, I still think the PSA 10 it demands a premium. Like, hoping for a BGS 10 pristine is like, I, I mean, you're never going to get it. So I would, I would still say valuable, value wise, still going for PSA. Yeah. Well, I'll, I don't know for sure what he's asking in terms of like, if he's saying just for grading, like you sending in, it's PSA, yeah. no question. Because yeah. the thing I don't understand is BGS has to know that they're lagging behind big time. And their turnaround time at this point is like worse. At least that's my understanding. Yeah. Like, how is that? How is that possible? Like, that's literally it's if you're behind, you lose 100%. If your turnaround time is behind PSA, you lose. 
if it's ahead of them, you almost win 100%. Like people are going to be throwing stuff at you if you get your turnaround time. So it's easy for me to say when I don't understand their supply chain, all these things, but it's just shocking to me. Like, cause I, I guess to answer this question, no, I would never, I don't think I would send anything to BGS right now. Um, except for maybe like, like patch carts. Some people have made the argument that it's better because you can get a nine easier or something. I don't even know, to be honest, I don't have the experience, but um, in terms of grading, yeah, I'm sending only through PSA. The thing I do like about BGS is the sub subgrades. There you actually have some feedback of why a card got a 9.5 and not a 10 or a nine and not a 9.5. With PSA, you just don't know. You have to figure it out for, you get a nine or you get a 10, like obviously a nine is good, a 10 is good, but you get a nine and you have to figure out by yourself why it's a nine, like no feedbacks whatsoever. That's the only thing I think I like about PGS. Yeah. And once again, I don't really understand why PSA can't do that because you're already doing that in your head. If you're a grader, right? It's like, oh, it's the corners that took this down. So yeah. just write it basically. I don't know. That's what I think. Um, but I will say, yeah, yeah go on. All it takes is like put a little think like a, a, a small check mark on one of the four things that were missing yeah. or weren't as good and there you have your feedback i mean that that's all it takes i just said you're doing it while you yeah while you're looking at the card so why all it takes is like a checkbox that's it so yeah. yeah but i will i was just super down on bgs but i would say in terms of buying slabs i i'm big on bgs um I think the the price gap right now is like crazy. I just got a uh, I just got yeah. a messy 2014 World Cup BGS 9.5. I got two of them actually. Uh, so sneak peek if you made it to this point of the podcast. But I think nice. I literally got two of them, and it, it's all it's they have ten subgrades. I'm pretty sure it's like 9.5, 9.5, 10, 10. I got two of them for the price of one messy PSA 10. So. That's insane to me, especially when personally, like for PC reasons, I like the BGS slab better. Yeah. Yeah, they're nice. I mean, they look good. Um, but again, like why, what, what, why are you sending it to PSA or BGS? Is it for monetary value reasons? Is it for collecting? Is it for whatever? So it's, uh, it's hard to, add, to like answer it all, but, um, I would send for money. I would send it to PSA if I kind of like the BGS slab more as well, from a artistic point of view. I would say aesthetic, so, aesthetic. Yeah, aesthetic. That, that's go. it. That's so our, yeah. that's our word of the day: aesthetic. aesthetic. Discount, <laughs> discount code. Um, card hour and trike hot packs three thousand a pack. Discount code aesthetic for two percent off. Um, <laughs> okay, next one. This is a good question from Jake Kalbfeld. Question for next week's episode. Now that Mbappe's PSA 9 Panini foot sticker is around $750, what are your thoughts of investing in this as the pop count is very low and it, it is considered his true rookie? I mean, I, I would I would buy that stuff. Why why wouldn't you? It's his that's actually his Monaco one is actually if foot one is actually his true rookie. So 750 what, what i mean the psa 10 at one point was like 10k or something so if the if the psa 10 goes up then the psa 9 follows so for 750 i'm not sure what it was at the peak the psa 9 um yeah but i think it, it, it was, should should have been like two or three k right i mean if the psa 10 was around 10 then yeah i think i, think I remember 9... i think i even made a video where the psa 9 was going for 2500 and that was not too long ago there you go so i think a lot of people are a lot of people see these cards go down and they think wow the the card market the soccer card market is is collapsing there is there is no way it's ever going to go back up we're just going to sell everything and i i I think it's a great time to buy. I mean, a PSA nine for, for seven fifty. I think that's a buy. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I, I had a deep cut before you want another big deep cut. Let's go. I watched Brandon Chung's video today about Neymar cards. And so shout out to you, man. Uh, you're definitely not at this point of the video, but if you made it, congrats. But, uh, <laughs> He, he was talking about how he wants the, Nest, the uh, Neymar 2009 
rookie. It's like gold to chromo or something like that, but it's legit. It's not like match attacks. It's a, and I'm pretty sure it's a real card, not a sticker. Um, and yeah. I just looked on eBay real quick and it's not that expensive. Like there were, there's not a PSA. There's not a really a good grade on there. There's like a PSA five for a thousand dollars. But even then I was like, I feel like these should be more. Same thing with when you compare the pops of this, of the Mbappe rookie, I just feel like one of the things I really want to do is like the real Mbappe rookie, real Neymar rookie, real Lewandowski rookie, even like, these I saw like a Kevin De Bruyne to tops from when he's at Chelsea, uh, Timo Werner tops from when he's at Stuttgart. Like, if you could get these in a good grade, those are just the most desirable things to me. And the pop is insane. It's so so low. I think this Mbappe one might actually be a tiny bit more because it's basically a modern one. But I believe we talk about a lot. This is true rookies. And I think the premium being placed on them right now is not enough. Yeah, no, I would agree. I mean, even though Americans don't always agree with the, with the sticker part, that doesn't matter because it is, is true rookie. So whether you like it or not, whether you agree with it or not, I, I would buy that for 750 PSA nine. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I actually, I was looking at his Prism PSA 9s because they've gotten so cheap. It's like, I think it's $180 right now, which is crazy from where yeah, they were. Yeah. But uh, this is, sorry, I don't have the pops handy and I'm not going to look them up right now. But the pop for the PSA 9 Prism versus the sticker has to be what, like 50 times? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe something probably. like that. So the premium should be bigger. And I think that this is actually not even the worst example. Like I mentioned, Timo Werner. I was paying, you know, at, at one point for his prism, like 30 bucks. Um, and his tops, Stuttgart, I was like, how many of these cards are really out there in good condition? Like 19? <laughs> like, and, and that one's yeah. going for, okay, like 70. I was like, why would I not just buy that? So yeah. this is what I, I've talked about in a lot of interviews. I don't think the soccer market is like perfectly optimized. So for the most part, I would say like in basketball, if you had a thought like this, you're like, how come no one wants Luka Doncic's rookie sticker? It's only a uh, hundred dollars more than his prism. And the pop is this, this, and that it's like, it, it, it's, you're just, I'm sorry. People just don't want it. Like you're not going to like outsmart the basketball market in a sense. <laughs> like the prices are set pretty much where they're yeah. supposed to be. Where I think in soccer, like if you just look at something like this and you're like, Hey, that doesn't really make sense. I would rather have, I think this is a really good price for the sticker in a PSA nine. I think you just go for it because the market, like I said, it, it doesn't seem to be very efficient to me right now. No, it's a bit all over the place. I think a lot of people are still questioning the market because of the, the prism dump. Um, so I, I think it, it's a great time to buy because people don't really know how to value things. That's one. Um, and they're still, they're still not sure about the market as a whole. So I think again, uh, I would buy that for 750. Yeah. And, uh, we actually talked about it a little bit before, uh, we got on, I had a video with my friend Tristan and he's a big high end basketball card trader. Um, he was able to buy a house from his profits. So if you haven't checked out that video on my YouTube, definitely go check it out. But one thing I thought of looking at him, like those high-end cards, like the profit and how much they can increase is really just insane. Like when it's low, basically when it's a low pop, if it's limited supply and you don't, if it's, if there's only 20 of this card out there, right. And there, there's probably only like one on eBay at a time, maybe two. If you buy the one in a PSA 10 for $5,000, someone will not hesitate to come and pay 7,000, you know, a month later. So with these yeah. low pop soccer cards, like that, that those, pin, those uh, Mbappes, and once again, I have to look at the pop, but I have to imagine they're not on eBay all the time. So I just no, think, probably not. I just think now, if you can pick up these high end, low pop soccer stuff, I just think your upside is, is unreal. It's like, there's no, there's no limit on it. Especially for guys like Mbappe who will always compete and contest for a Euros, for a World Cup, for a Champions League. 
Like it's different if you have these low pop high end of random guys. Like I would say Werner is even a random guy because Germany was a really struggling and with Chelsea is is not gonna <laughs> win the Champions League, I imagine. So it's different. But if you if you have guys like Mbappé, um it's like top of my head, I don't know, Neymar maybe with Brazil and uh PSG. It's it's a different story. I mean, j- again, it comes down to know the players and know where they fit in the team and in the competition in the league. Um, yeah, yeah I, I mean, think, I think you're right. Werner is a random guy in a sense, like you're right. I guess just to boil it down, though, I'm learning the power of name your price. Like with with a prism card, you will never be able to name your price unless it's like a one of one or something like that. But yeah. I think even with this Mbappe sticker that there's probably a few out there, like let's say around the Euros, definitely around the World Cup, I think you get yourself into a situation where you can name your price on the card. And that's that's a good position to be in. But okay, uh, that was a good question. I I like that one. This is kind of a longer one. Uh, Maybe, yeah, let's go go one question at a time and uh, maybe keep it a little shorter than the last one. But that was my fault, mainly. All right, Brandon Babcock. Who do you guys think has the best shot to upset Bayern or is your favorite to win the Champions League? Bayern. <laughs> That's, um, I, I, if I have to give an, an upset, um, let me go for a crazy one then. Uh, I would say uh, Atletico. I, I like that from purely like if I had to bet, right? If I had to bet like my life or whatever is like choose someone besides Byron, I probably would go with Atletico because like we said, they, they'll just find a way. They can find a way. Um, my real prediction though, uh, I will go with, and I don't like it now that it's coming, <laughs> coming out, but I'll say Liverpool. I just think, it, it, you know what I mean? They have at least have that potential. People act like they're in shambles. They're really not. They're just missing van dyke and they looked almost unbeatable at times last year so i'll go with liverpool 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 is a good shot too yeah okay next one who has the best chance to upset france in the euros or is your favorite to win the euros uh for that one i'm going for portugal okay Um, portugal or france those one of those two are gonna win it am i wrong to say belgium (laughs) <laughs> that would be interesting um they're good i mean what are they i mean ranking the rankings are kind of garbage but aren't they like number three or something no we're number one yeah but that's okay even better that's what i'm saying they're <laughs> they're doing well um we we like your bench that's that and, and in a big tournament when like all it I said it in, in the previous episode, I think, or one of or another video, like all it takes for Belgium to totally mess up is either Lukaku going out, De Bruyne co- going out, or Mertens going out. If you have two of them going out, then it's game over. So we just like a bench. That's basically it. That's, I, I don't think, like our time to have won the World Cup or a big prize was a 2018 World Cup where we finished third. That was our time. I feel like our time is done right now and we're not going to see a team like we had in 2018 in the next 15 years, maybe. Um, but I mean, it's a tournament. It, it has to be played. I, I can say whatever I want right now and we end up winning it, of course, and I look, look like a fool. Um, but what I've seen from our bench, that's just that's nowhere near good enough to, to compete in a big tournament. Um, so... I I I, I kind of like that people have faith in Belgium, um, but I I wouldn't put my money on it. Americans be like, I think Team USA is bringing it home. <laughs> um, and another, I'll, I'm just I'm I'm all over the place this episode, so I apologize. But you, uh, I also have some some Tilly Mons silver prisms coming back from PSA. So that's uh, I think I'm I'm all in on Belgium, but he's a good, he's a good player. He is, and they were 85 cents. So I, I don't see this. I mean, right? I, I'm not sure this is a huge money making opportunity for me, but I just remember like how hyped he was. And he was, he was playing well at such a young age. Like I thought he was going to be like, he was almost like, he doesn't play like Camavinga, but like how that hype around him in that position was, he was like doing things at a really, really young age. 
But okay, moving on. Who do you think is the best young player under 25 to invest in with a two to five year outlook? Holland. That I think that's an easy one, Holland. If there is if there is any any player right now that can win the Ballon d'Or or he just won the Golden Boy award. I mean, the guy the guy played I looked it up, it was like twenty or not even twenty four games at Salzburg before making it to Dortmund. And at Dortmund he, he just scores his, I mean, how can you not pick Holland? Like who who are you going to put in front of Holland? If 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 you don't agree with Holland, like who who would you say? Mbappe. Yeah, but I mean, he's. I can even see Holland win the Ballon d'Or before Mbappe. I, I actually I actually agree with you. I said that to be a little unless bit a, yeah unless Mbappe ends up winning another World Cup or the Euros because he won the World Cup already. So that that's already that's already done. If he ends up winning the Euros or the Champions League, he he might win the Ballon d'Or. But I can see Holland winning the Ballon d'Or earlier than Mbappe, which is yeah, which here's, is a, a a big claim. But here's uh, here's what I'll say. I think the best. I the answer is Holland for me too. I think especially because yeah, I could see him winning the Ballon d'Or before Mbappe. Well, it depends, right? Because his prize is already way up there. I mean, if you if you who, take Mbappe a guy who is both. I mean, okay. if you take a guy who is less expensive, who is really good and has a high ceiling, maybe someone like Fatty, obviously you can make more money because the entry is lower, so you can buy more of him. So I think it kind of depends. Uh, but if you ask me f- to name a player that I would invest in and keep for the next two to five years i think it will ha- it would be holland he's obviously not going to win the euros because he's not even in there and with norway he's not going to win a world cup but i mean messi has not won a world cup so i don't think i i i feel like the whole holding a world cup against a player is just it's stupid because i mean pele only played for santos so um yeah, I mean, you could, you could argue about anything, but I would say Holland. Um, so I have, a, I have a couple thoughts. First of all, I'm going to have to uh, softly disagree with you on Holland's prices because outside of the Topps Chrome Bundesliga, which I think is like not even close to his most desirable card, he is like, yeah. I think he's criminally cheap. Um, I just picked up his Topps Finest Refractor. Like that might be like the number one card in my opinion. For two hundred and seventy-five dollars shipped, and I was talking yes. to a guy on Instagram, Dan, Dan the man. Shout out to you. He was just saying he got offered his Panini Foosball stickers for one hundred and fifty dollars each. PSA nine. So that yeah. to me is just for for him is is so so cheap. And yes, I mean once again, I'm being a little bit of a devil's advocate. He's more expensive than still ninety nine percent of people, but yeah compared like i just think his multiple versus some of these other young guys should be like 10x type of thing um the only yeah, he's still young too very young the only one last thing once again i'm being a devil's advocate right now so i apologize but the one thing i will say for mbappe is he's a little bit safer to me in a sense because if Mbappe didn't play for two years, like if he just sat out for two years and then just started playing again, I think people would still be really excited. Like he would have a lot of value yeah. still because of what he's already yeah. accomplished and he's still so, so young. If yeah. Holland like ran into injuries right now, like just super, and I won't even say it, but if Holland ran into injuries right now, I'm not sure his cards would hold as much value two years from now. You know what I mean? Hmm. Maybe I'm just biased. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But he's something different, man, Holland. I mean, he's he's injured right now. He's not he's not been playing for what is it, two weeks? Yeah. I don't I don't think his price has came down much as compared to Fatty's. Like once Fatty was announced injured, prices start dropping. I don't think Holland's prices dropped. Yeah. I, I haven't I haven't looked it up. I don't know. Sorry, another tangent, but yeah, Fati 
mega cracks dropping. I think PSA nine. I saw one go for three fifty the other day. Yeah, I'm I'm in a bad. I'm having some bad thoughts right now. Let me tell you because I just <laughs> I made a list last night. Mbappe silver prism PSA nine. Um, mm-hmm. the Neymar card. Mm-hmm. Lewandowski. Ansu Fati mega cracks. Uh, Holland refractor PSA ten. Mbappe rookie sticker. Pretty much like any card, even even the Messi, throw the Messi 2006, Ronaldo 2006. I can pick up all those cards. This is basically my dream soccer list for like $3,000, which is a lot. But literally like Messi or Mbappe Prism Silver, um, all, uh, Fati Mega Cracks. Like it's just crazy. What like there's some really good cards out there right now that I think you can invest in. Yeah, but then again, you all besides Messi, there's all only young guys. In yeah, there, which sure. is what I mean. I feel like sometimes people wanna wanna. I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm gonna get hate for this, but there is nothing wrong in investing in young guys. That's the mm-hmm. risk you take, and if you're willing to take that risk and you realize it's only young guys you invest in, then, then it's, well, it's your money. Um, do I understand that people say they are youngsters? Sure. I mean, but even Messi can get injured. Obviously he is, is established. If he gets out injured right now and he never plays again, it's still the same Messi. But I, I don't see anything wrong in investing in younger guys. I, I, I just don't, I didn't, I don't understand why, why it's so, it's it won't almost get like pushed in a corner. If you go out and say you invest in young guys and you're like these prism cards and you're almost like, I don't know, a stupid guy investing in yeah. random stuff. Yeah. I, I will say you're right though. Like to be a little skeptical because right now in my mind, like the prices have gotten so cheap. My goal yeah. and what I think I'm going to do is I want to build a young star, like war chest, like have the Mbappe prism <laughs> silver, have the true yeah. rookie. I already have a lot of Holland and then pick up the Fati mega cracks and then I'll have the contenders too. And like, that's, that's nice right there. But the thing I keep reminding myself too, is I'm sorry, I can't make a good soccer comparison because the market was way different back then. Anyways, there was no one loading up on like Boyan. People weren't investing in Boyan, but I'll just use a basketball example. Like there would have been a point in time where it's like, okay, I have Andrew Wiggins, Derek Rose and Paul George, like nothing. I have all their best cards and nothing can go wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that wouldn't have worked out for you. So, and yeah. in our mind, it's like, okay, Holland, Fati are sure things, even Mbappe to an extent. It's like, even when guys are sure things, it doesn't always yeah. work out like that. Yeah. And then the market decides, right? If the market says we're going to drop Fatty, then goodbye Fatty. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's true. It there is ne- never a sure thing. Maybe Pele is the closest thing to being sure, uh, but even then, it's like if if the world goes in a massive financial crisis, then your cards are worthless. Maybe maybe you have some stuff to put the light of the light of fire on, um, but yeah. But it, yeah. That, I just I just I just think that people judge other people too much maybe i have done that in the past maybe um of only buying prism and youngsters i mean if that's your plan if that's your goal if that's what you want it's that go for it that is a great note to end the episode on buy what you like don't judge other people in this crazy time we're in so much going wrong in the world let's just spread love and let's just appreciate each (laughs) other um so brandon sorry i'm skipping your last question about Mbappe base sticker and, and card. We kind of already talked about that anyways. You can blame me for random Lamborghini. But really appreciate you guys watching. Um, make sure to like and subscribe down below. And this is episode number three. We're going to keep them coming. Appreciate you. Ciao. If you like this episode, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon in order to get notified whenever I release a new soccer or soccer card video. And don't forget to leave your questions in the comments down below. I see you in the next one.